Hello, hello, this is Alex Glenn, and today I'm really excited because we have a change in format. Today we're doing what's called a mastermind, and a mastermind is where I invite a few of my colleagues who are experts in a specific topic, and we discuss a pain point that someone we know is going through at that time, and today we're going to do product hunt launches. So we discuss on this episode how to set up your product hunt launch for success. We talk about ways to extend the life of the product hunt past the initial bump in engagement. We talk about landing page optimization. We talk about redirects. We talk about what to do with criticism. We talk about what not to do. We talk about the algorithm. We talk about everything that you need to know about a product hunt launch. It's an incredible, valuable episode. So go ahead and stay tuned and let me know if you enjoy it. We love reviews and we love feedback. The email for feedback is team, T-E-A-M, at automated.af. Enjoy. 90% Conversational of the market. market. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think a real yeah. game changer. The marketing yeah. automation yeah. discussion. I'll pass this back off to, uh, I think, uh, I think Kalo, you had some really awesome, awesome insight and some good, good experience related to uh, product hunt recently, but I'm not the product hunt expert. So maybe if you can help me out by sharing just your opinion on why people hunt their products and not just obviously to get the exposure. I think there's more than that, but um, anything that's just a non-exposure related and why people hunt their products. Yeah, sure. So I have a bunch of products that I hunted, uh, a couple of good ones with uh, four, 400 of votes and more, and also a couple of ones that were a disaster. But personally for me, um, as someone that has, uh, that's running SaaS businesses and uh, products. Uh, I think product one is a great place to to get some uh, some some real customers apart from from the traffic spike. Uh, you know that that is actually more or less vanity metrics. Um, for Hedridge, my my SaaS uh, that we submitted to product one back in 2016. Uh, I think in the beginning, uh, probably the, the first. Uh, two to three months, maybe about thirty percent of the paying customers from who were from Product Hunt. So that was uh, that was quite good boost for us. Uh, so there's some definitely early adopters that are willing to pay for uh, for new products for uh, for for uh, for products that are not uh, fully developed yet. Uh, so so this is I'd say probably for me personally the best uh, the best benefit of Product Hunt really. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think early adopters, I think uh, the beta testers too. I mean, a lot of people yeah. will do product hunts just to get those beta testers in. So that's a recommendation. You know, you may not get uh, a very good kind of a revenue event from product hunt. It may just be something that you give away. I think you did an ebook recently, Kayla. That was awesome. I'm showing um, head reach, uh, the product hunt. So you looks like that was pretty successful. Um, showing your startup guide or sorry, your, your uh, guide to outreach marketing. So eBooks too. Um, this is something I think a lot of people don't really realize about product hunt. You, you can do a lot of different things. Um, so if anyone has anything besides eBooks and um, their SaaS products, um, I think I've seen some other stuff, but any, uh, any, anything else besides the product in the eBook that you can use product hunt for? Uh, podcasts. I uh, know the Steli and uh, Hitten, they're doing the startup podcast and they're submitting each each uh, episode there. So that's definitely, and I've seen them getting like 40, 50 of votes. That's for, for like per episode. And when you submit like weekly episodes, you see that amounts to quite a big number of uh, traffic. Uh, and so, yeah, podcasts for sure. Uh, pretty much every type of, every content piece you can submit there. Uh, apart from like articles, it has to be, uh, I, I think they don't allow articles, uh, but podcasts, ebooks, um, maybe like if you have like a webinar, you can do that as well. So, yeah. I'm, I had no idea you could submit podcasts. So this is where um, I need to kind of <laughs> brush, up, <laughs> brush up on product hunt. This is great. I happen to have one of those. I should probably 
do a hunt next week and see see what happens. So that's what I'll do. I'll be the experiment. So I'll kind of uh, I'll go through the tips and the strategies that we recommend now, and and I'll try to get my podcast up there. So let's talk about that. So um, what is the process to get on to product hunt. So I, I want to hear from Batiste. I yeah. see you on here. My Is mic your mic on. on Batiste? Are you are you in the uh, uh, yeah. are you in the group? Yeah, there you. Go. Yes, buddy. I love it. So Batiste, uh, CEO of Feedier.com. Check it out. But um, Batiste, can you walk us through just the uh, just the admin kind of the admin view of of just what you have to do? To get on the product hunt, what are the steps? Um, sure. So, I guess the first step is to get your product or whatever you you putting out ready, and um, then you need to agree on a. I would say agree on a date with your team. So, uh, as a rule of thumb, I would go for Tuesday, or Wednesday, or or maybe Thursday, but avoid weekend and. Uh, on Monday, I think it's really bad. Um, well, at least um, based on my experience and my just uh, you know understanding of the process. Um, and uh, yeah, then you need to um, prep up all of your marketing assets and all of the stuff. Uh, the community really enjoy if you if you come up with a few kind of dedicated assets, like you know you just put the the product and logo on, on your cover or whatever you can do. Um, it's always appreciated. Um, and then it's all about uh, starting your like your marketing, your promotion, uh, putting together uh, your plan to, to get the word out, I guess. Nice. And um, video. I, you know, obviously, I, I believe video is, is the preferred... Um, preferred uh type of media to, to add to your main image area there you can do images or video but yeah it's nice um but i i assume yeah, it's nice to have a video as well yeah you're right so uh, okay so if you're a SaaS product maybe a screencast video of, of of the dashboard something to show them really what's what's going on um let's talk about the call to action so they ask you know what 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 do you ask them to do obviously you want them to upvote you want them to go to your website um, can we talk about any experience anyone has, any, any best practices anyone has around the call to action as well as uh, the offer? And uh, Gitana, you, you actually have an awesome situation because you, you represent a product that helps build, uh, obviously, your referral engine. So can you talk maybe about some strategies around what happens if you have an offer included in your product hunt? Any recommendations around that? Yes, sure. Um, when it when it comes to um, launching on product hunts, yeah, we we have uh, when it comes when it comes to launching on product hunts, um, I'm gonna be honest, we haven't yet launched on product hunt um, because. Uh, we were delaying the, 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 the launch um, and kind of like we, we got a lot of other priorities. But uh, as part of the services, the service that we offer, uh, which is referral marketing, as you said, we have helped and we have been um, involved in launches for our clients. So usually we get involved where, since as, as others have said, um, this call uh, kind of like you get a ton of traffic and the idea is to try to capture um, as many of the leads that will visit uh, your, your, your landing page. So most will try simply to sign up um, uh, to get to get those visitors to sign up for the product or service that that you are offering, but um, we have helped some customers and they got really good results um, to actually get them in a list and then um, get them in a funnel where you will ask for uh, referrals um, in exchange for a reward. So that will basically add more fuel to your um, uh, product hunt, uh, so to speak, uh, traffic bump. Um, I don't, uh, I don't, um, have any tips regarding the product hunt launch itself. So, 
Um, I think there are other people who, who can give more tips. But when it comes to uh, referrals, um, it has worked out really well for some of the customers. For instance, um, a particular tip that um, worked really well was where um, uh, you give certain incentive, like you give an exclusive ebook or exclusive um, access to, to, to a product uh, or to a, a feature in a software as a service to those only who will manage to refer uh, one of their friends. So um, that is basically how we were involved. Got it. Can you just, you don't have to dive in deep, but um, let's just say I did want to set that up and I have a specific feature inside my dashboard, of my SaaS product that I want to allow anyone who, who sends a referral through specifically around uh, Product Hunt, uh, specifically people that come in through Product Hunt. So this would be an offer to people in Product Hunt, maybe a discount to start, but then a follow-up offer to access a specific feature of the product uh, if they refer a friend. Can you just talk about how, and by the way, early parrot is, is your uh, earlyparrot.com spelled correctly is your uh, is your site i'm showing it up here but if you can talk about just how that works basically um uh, with with early periods uh, what we will do will basically integrate um with within the software as a service itself so basically usually w what what um, our clients will do will add um, a way how um, their existing users will have the ability to share on social media and also via via email um, in order to get them uh, to 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 refer to their friends and then what early parrot will do under the hood um, it will basically monitor um, those visitors that are coming uh, through recommendations and it will be able to determine who referred who and will automatically give out the rewards. Um, but this is the, the idea is to actually extend um, uh, what Product Hunt will give you. So Product Hunt will give you um, a short but very huge bump in your traffic and even in your signups. Um, but using this approach, you will, so, so to speak, prolong and you will get more juice, so to speak, out of uh, what you have managed to capture during your product hunt uh, launch. That's huge. That's huge. Um, so, I mean, uh, the refer friend is, is the easy use case that we are all familiar with. Uh, but I, I, for one, did not consider the continual um, benefit of, of a refer another friend or refer somebody else and get access to a specific aspect of your product. Um, that's, that's something that's very interesting. I've, I haven't seen that uh, recently, so I, I love it. And I'm showing Early Parrot here. Check that out, anyone that uh, has not. So we've got um, get the product ready. We've got set a date. We've got um, prep your marketing assets, uh, preferably a video if you're a SaaS product. Show the UI. Um, if you're a uh, a ebook or a podcast, maybe um, maybe have a little clip or have a couple pages listed there. Um, now, um, I have uh, a couple of, of kind of uh, tips from insiders, um, but there are pre-product hunt um, campaigns that you can run. Okay, so. You know, there's stuff that you can do on Reddit. There's stuff that you can do on other platforms to kind of give people a little bit of uh, forewarning and a little bit of early access, stuff like that. So I uh, recommend checking out those articles and I'll post some of the links in here. But specifically, um, you have to have a little bit of clout on Product Hunt to really get, um, get more of the benefit of any of your upvotes or at least get the benefit of the upvotes from people that have more clout. So I guess a question that I have for anyone that's gone through this is, have you looked for specific people that have really strong profiles on Product Hunt to go ahead and get involved in your campaign? So gone to Reddit, gone to maybe even Fiverr and look for people that have strong clout and built the relationship and say, you know, hey, come and, and come and help me with my hunt and uh, give me an upvote. Have you, has anyone ever done that? Done any specific outreach before their product hunt to people with strong product hunt profiles? Anyone? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I can jump. Uh, so uh, by the way, I'm, by the way, I'm here. 
so for Head Reach, uh, we had, well, this is the, with this is place to start with is your look at your customers, especially if you have a product or if you have a bigger audience. Uh, for, for Hedrich, um, we got Andrew Warner, who is a very big influencer in the startup space to, to hunt us. And he, he was a customer. Uh, so that was very, quite easy. So look at your, uh, you know, friends, close audience, customers. This will be some people that would like to, uh, hunt you and, and, and promote you and, uh, basically help you with product hunt. The other thing we did, um, uh, back then was, um, I looked at the hunters of uh, competitive products. Uh, you can you can get a list of all of, uh, all of the people that uh, have hunted uh, that have uploaded, uploaded a specific product, and you can get their Twitter profiles. Uh, so this is this is the relevant audience. And what they did there's a, there's a product called Tweety. Uh, it's it's a Twitter automation tool that you can. Once you have the list of all of, all of these people, you can follow them on Twitter. Uh, you can kind of build an audience uh, pre-launch uh, before before you submit your product on Product Hunt. So you can um, start building relationship with these people. And uh, obviously, since they've already bought a similar products, it's quite good audience to have reached to and uh, once we launched we we got in touch with them uh, just let them uh, asking them to to check our product uh, hopefully avoid us and it it's quite helped quite a lot okay can you mention the tool one more time what was the tool you used for twitter outreach it's called tweety t-w-e-t-i uh, got it tweety.com yeah, I think it's dot com. Uh, let me I'll check. pull it up. I'll try to find it here. So, dot com. Yeah, Tweety. Sorry, uh, T W E E. I just posted in the chat here. Yeah, let me grab that out of the chat. That's important. I love mentioning Tweety. Ah, with a T. Or sorry, with a P. There we go. Got it. Uh, I'm gonna pull that up right here. Love it. Love it. Tweepy.com. That's a new one. Um, I'm going to. So, yeah, that, that helped quite a lot. Uh, and in terms of tools, um, you can also look at. Uh, 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 let me check. What was the name? Product Preview. Product Preview. Uh, it's basically a tool that helps you preview your product and submission before you post it. So you can prepare all of your marketing assets, videos and stuff like that and see how it will look on product hunt. Uh, so that's quite helpful pre-launch. Uh, and another one is uh, IntroBar. Uh, IntroBar is, it uh, allows you to put like a very simple, like a pop-up on top of your uh, landing page specifically for, for product hunt uh, people. So you, they grab the referral link uh, there's a ref uh, product hunt URL, and all, peop all, all the people that access that uh, that that link uh, will will get the we will get the pop up, and you can use it to uh, share some special discount for product hunt people. I love it. Uh, I'm putting a list together under setup for success under yours. So if you can add that final one, I didn't catch all of that, but I got a product hunt previewer um page on product hunt so i linked to that i believe that's what you're talking about i linked to tweepy that's awesome so kalo huge man you you are a world of wisdom man i think uh i think that was very valuable so thank you very much for adding those tips that's going to help out a lot so uh so let me just see if there's anything that we haven't discussed here in the setup process um i know there's a lot to it and it's not that simple but, um, you know, kind of uh, choosing a good date, making sure you prep those assets, building your list, use tweepy.com uh, on Twitter, build Twitter profile uh, links. I'm sorry, a list of Twitter profiles for anyone specifically, uh, ideally, if they have a, a product hunt clout, not just a profile, but have a history on product hunt, have hunted on product hunt before, build that list, send DMs out when you have your uh, product hunt live. 
So make sure that that list receives a link to the product hunt and hopefully you have a little bit of a relationship with them prior, um, not just um, bombarding people that you don't know with links to your product hunt. Um, so maybe uh, maybe share some of their content, I'd say, before you kind of reach out to them, but have a list at the very least. Um, your internal list, of course. I mean, anyone that uh, is on your in your database that that you think is a good um, opportunity to kind of help you out with the product hunt. So get that list together, maybe compile it, uh, maybe tag it uh, in your CRM with product hunt as a tag so that you know this is your list that you're going to email when your product hunt is live. Um, and then um, uh, getting contributor access. Let me just think if there's anything worth discussing on the setup. Um, I have a tip here to post it before 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, for anyone that wants to know about just, just time for going live, that could be something that's interesting. Uh, so play around with the time. Um, Ryan has some tips here. Um, uh, Matt Ryan, we can, we can talk about his, he, he, he says never publicly ask for votes. Um, so, uh, do a more personal invite. Don't just, don't just publicly ask for votes. Uh, don't get people to open product hunts accounts just to upvote you. So the algorithm is, is something we should talk about. Uh, this is an important aspect of it. So um, on Product Hunt's website, on their pro tips, they they ha obviously mentioned fraudulent activity. So do not, you know, do not have um, ghost accounts upvoting, do not have fake accounts upvoting. Um, and that correlates, I believe, with what he mentions where you almost do not want people to create product hunt accounts to upvote you. So that's why you you should be very specific with your list. And it's not mentioned on their website, but I believe these go hand in hand with regards to how the algorithm works. Um, and maybe Kalo or Batiste, you guys can uh, mention anything you know about this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, a good example is uh, 100 people that have a decent history on product hunt have hunted before or um, have, 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 have voted a number of products over the past year uh, is better than having a thousand people that had to create product hunt accounts in order to upvote you. So this is very important if you're in a specific industry where your your uh, uh, product users may not be early adopters, they may not be very tech savvy. Uh, you know, if you're a realtor that's launching a product and most of your uh, most of your followers, most of your list are people that have bought homes from you, they may not have product hunt accounts. So you do not want to invite those people to hunt you because that can hurt you more than it helps you. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but I think that's kind of where where the uh, tip from uh, Mr. Ryan there, he said, uh, don't let people open new product accounts to upvote you. So that's a good tip. Um, uh, don't spam groups, he says. Don't spam groups or channels to get upvotes. So don't just go to Facebook groups, Slack groups, and just say, you know, hey, guys, upvote me. Um, DM, always build your list. Be very strategic about who you invite, I think, is the main takeaway for that. Any other what not to do's from anyone, Batiste, Kalo? Katano, you don't uh, have a product hunt, but anyone that has any uh, known not to do's? Yeah, this is Matt. A couple of things that I've experienced is, um, or at least observed, and I've never uh, posted anything on product hunt, by the way. Um, do not uh, take criticism um, like with a lot of emotion. I've seen a lot of people reply back to other hunters and saying, here are the, some of the cons, and then the, um, the maker will reply back and like, hey, that's not, and you're just using it wrong, right? Um, so taking criticism um, with a grain of salt is definitely something you want to do. You don't want to be posting back and saying like, hey, you're wrong. And by the way, guys, uh, that's Matt Lowe. He's the founder and CEO of Get Chipbot, or sorry, Chipbot. Uh, it's getchipbot.com. It's G-E-T-C-H-I-P-B-O-T.com. Great tip. That's awesome. So, you know, if someone starts giving you some backlash, um, some negative comments, don't take it too seriously. Don't get into a, uh, a battle there and, and just kind of keep it positive. Um, yeah. And I think you can make those as well. And this is not, it's actually something to do is take those criticisms and say, Hey, yeah, you're right. Um, you know, what, uh, what other things can you actually provide? Um, I think being proactive and then turning these criticisms into ways of like getting um, very, 
uh, direct feedback channels is really useful. Um, one example is um, unrelated to Product Hunt, but it's similar in terms of releases like on Indie Hacker. A lot of the times we'll post some, we'll post a new project. People will do criticisms. And what we'll do is we'll take that conversations to a direct message. So it's like, hey, what other feedback do you have? Because oftentimes they'll say one thing, but they actually have a lot of things. And that's really valuable to you if you're a business owner or, or, or a product maker. I love it. I love it. Um, so yeah, take them, you know, take them seriously, but don't react really. Kind of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, they, and that those could be your early customers as well. The people, your strongest critics, think about it. If you, if you said, um, Hey, if you improve the, you need to improve X, Y, and Z, right? The next week, the business, uh, someone reaches out to you, Hey, we implemented all these changes. Plus we did a little bit more. Um, were you willing to try it out again? They do, and they become one of your first customers. I love it. And I, yeah, I've had a lot of that experience too. I mean, the people that are willing to give you their feedback, I mean, even if it is negative, um, will be better and longer customers if you do end up converting them. And they, they, chances are they're just kind of giving you that feedback just to hopefully help you and give you, give you some insight. And hopefully you make that change and you have a customer for life. So great tips. Um, right. And I love Chip Bob, by the way. I'm going to start playing around with it and get in there too. So this correlates with early parrot and maybe, uh, maybe this is worth you two kind of getting together on, on a strategy as well. But, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, when you, when you, when you're off product hunt, let's just talk about that real quick. So you've got product hunt going, you've got, you know, your campaign, maybe you have um, a specific referral link. Obviously you're tracking uh, visitors from product hunt. Hopefully you have early parrot and you're doing some sort of a referral campaign. Uh, once you land on a page, you want to fire off a specific message on that page, welcoming, welcoming product hunt visitors. Um, the, uh, the strategy, let's talk real quick about the landing page and about um, uh, not driving to the home page. So anyone, if I imagine it's, it's uh, probably best interest to drive them to a landing page. So if anyone has any specific um, landing page optimization, whether that's specific messages on the landing page, We've talked about the offer, but anything else around copy or on setup of the landing page for people? I think you need to have a, a very targeted uh, banner or a message or whatever you can put together, at least. That's the very minimum. So, you know, at least the product and visitors know that you care about them and uh, you take the time to, to put together something special for them. So yeah, because you get the um, you get the referral. So when people come from product and you get in the link, you get a question mark, a ref equal a product and. So yeah, you can figure out uh, either just an intake or message or um, a banner. Uh, on our, on our website, we used um, something called Wise Pops, and uh, we just put uh, a banner at the top. Okay, can you link to that in the notes here uh, underneath you? Uh, I, I can certainly do that. That's a good yeah. tip. Uh, and that's what I was going to ask too. So if you do not have, um, not do not have the time, really? we, yeah. we, all, we all have the time, but create a landing page. But if, uh, if at the very least have a banner, maybe you can have um, a floating banner that says, um, if you're here from Product Hunt, click here to get your special offer because um, a lot of people um, – will not see that actual link on product hunt, especially if they're relatively new to product hunt. So they may see your hunt, but they don't see that little link off to your website on the right. Um, and maybe they don't click the get it button. So they'll go to search or they'll just type in your URL. So if they're going to your homepage and you have a big product hunt campaign going on, maybe have a nice floating banner at the top of your homepage that says, if you're here from product hunt, click here to get your free gift or get your discount or whatever that is. You could do that um, and just make sure to capture all those people. If you're a little bit more uh, tech savvy and you've got some some more stuff going on, um, then then you make sure to use a, uh, a redirect and um, get people that are coming from a product on, uh, page, have, have that in their browser history, um, send them to the right content on your site and um, get them to convert at uh, at, uh, under the discount. And then also, uh, on the back end, if, if you make sure they're using that hunter's discount, whatever that is, um, the discount code, if it's a product, we're talking about like a checkout, um, you can make sure to treat those people a little bit differently in not only the onboarding, but in post, uh, post, uh, sale, um, messaging. So 
So uh, getting referrals, um, asking them for advice, you know, maybe those are your really early adopters that you want to get feedback from. If you have a, a new beta version coming out, those are your people that are going to test out that new beta version of your product. So really good people that are coming from Product Hunt, really tech savvy, really knowledgeable people too. Um, so like Matt suggested, I mean, these these could be really, really awesome people to continue getting feedback from for the life of your product. So use those people and respect them, of course. Um, okay, guys. Well, I think we have a ton of good advice. Um, I've got some pro tips here from the site on the doc, and I'll put those in the notes. Got some more what not to do's. Um, really awesome. Uh, really awesome what not to do's from everybody in there. And, um, and links to all of your profiles. I'll put those in and I'll put your LinkedIn profiles too and all that good stuff so people can catch up with you. If you have a product hunt profile, add it to the doc. Uh, so people can uh, follow you on Product Hunt too. That's important. Um, so this was Product Hunt Review. I think we did our job. Anyone have any last remarks or any last questions that I didn't get to? Um, I do uh, I do have a couple of things. Um, one thing, yeah. So one thing to be cognizant of is don't, if you have visitors on your site right now and do you think they're the, and you're doing targeted analysis on that's the right audience, don't point them back to your Product Hunt page. That's a customer in front of you. I've seen a lot of mistakes where you'll do um, product hunt is sort of like what it was heavily invested in. So they'll point all their traffic to product hunt, which includes maybe creating, I've seen other people create ads or do um, influencer pr promotions and go to product hunt. But if, if some of those audiences are actually your key customers, you don't want to add another step to try to get their, um, to just really try to make them a customer. You want to just keep them on your site and work with the conversion flow. So that's just something to, to keep in mind when you do a product page. Um, case in point, I knew one guy who released a product on Monday. He received product uh, hunt of the day, uh, number one, received wow. 3,000 um, like unique visitors that same day, but got one sale. And that meant was he was driving a lot of traffic to there when maybe he could have maybe split the traffic a little bit. Cause he spent all his time going to get, getting that number one, he got it, but, and he got the traffic and he posted the traffic. He's doing an article on how, how successful that went. But when it came down to the bottom line, it was like, it actually didn't help much there. So you have to understand strategically where product hunt lives, right? If your goal is to get upvotes, then you're using that as ammo for your future audiences. Like imagine for him, right? His next strategy, which, um, I don't know if he was considering this in the beginning or not, but to use saying, hey, I was number one on Product Hunt. I was number one on Hacker News and using that as ammo for your true audience. So it looks like, hey, I'm not the first one to even think about this. That gives them a little bit more peace of mind when they're going your, going through your onboarding cycle. So that would be my only like insight that I, I, I want to share. That's great. So the main takeaway there is is definitely do not redirect people back off your site to Product Hunt when you've got a Product Hunt going because you do have organic traffic. You do have other traffic sources. And, uh, you know, although Product Hunt mm -hmm. is valuable as a resource, but uh, keep traffic coming one way from Product Hunt, not, not, not the other way. So awesome tips, Matt. And um, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and just do a quick rally. Uh, if anyone's still listening, check out getshipbot.com. That's Matt Lowe's awesome chat bot. Uh, sorry, chat tool. Uh, get, uh, go to Early Parrot. Uh, that's Gatano's. He was... Uh, mentioning some of the referral stuff. He, he runs earlyparrot.com, uh, feedier.com, Batiste, awesome customer feedback loops. Um, we had a great podcast uh, where we talked about that. Kalo's product hunt and ebook is up. I've got a link to that. Uh, and Headreach coming soon. What's going on with Headreach, by the way, Kalo? Uh, in charge. <laughs> the new one is in charge. Uh, Headreach, okay. the previous one. Yeah. Uh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. So maybe link to any any landing page you've got in the doc, so I'll people do, can I'll check do. out whatever whatever's going on with that. But uh, yeah, big yeah. Uh, CRM marketing automation, something or another coming soon, something like that. Mail marketing and marketing automation. Yeah, it's still early, very early stage, but uh, we have a waiting list subscription, so people can sign up. And yeah, perfect. Uh, I love it. Uh, perfect. All right, guys, this is huge. This is awesome. I learned a lot. I know that. I hope you guys learned a lot too. And anyone listening still, um, yeah, make sure to continue listening uh, to the podcast. If you've caught this episode, go back and, and uh, recap all the other episodes. Thank you, guys. Let's do another one of these soon. This was fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.
Well, 90% I think a real game changer. Yeah. 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 Yeah.